What's up guys, the code Holic is here and welcome to the third part of building an MVC framework using PHP. In this part, we're going to implement migrations. We're going to set up connection to the database, implement migrations and create user table there. Now it's time to register user and create a record in the database. But for this, we need to do a couple of things. First of all, we need to set up the connection to the database and work with the database. Uh, and then we need to create table. And then we need to also manage that the configuration file, which contains the credentials of the database to be ignored file so that we never commit and push this. Okay. So the idea is the following. So in the, in the project folder, I'm going to create uh, a folder called migrations. Okay. So let me create this. And what are in general migrations? Migration is a file which contains the change of the database and migrations in general are committed and pushed so that whenever someone else pulls your repository and runs some specific script, it should apply migrations to your local database. So if I created a user's table, for example, and I want to share my project to someone else, I create a migration file and inside the migration file, I write a code which creates a user table in the database. I commit, push this, someone else just pulls and runs specific script and the user's table will be created in his uh, MySQL database or any database as well. Okay, so let's create right here one migration file. And I'm gonna, um, the migrations basically have specific naming. Okay, you cannot, um, because they are executed in specific order. Okay, so many frameworks are using timestamp. Many frameworks have specific script to generate migrations. Okay, so you run some script, give just, uh, give the migration name and it generates this script for us um, and the file for us. But we're, we're not going to go too far and I'm going to create migration file manually, but we have to preserve some naming convention because the migrations needs to be executed in specific order. Okay. So if I just create users table and in the next migration, I add the password column to that table, for example, they could not be executed in reverse order. So first table must be created in order to um, add the column, right? Okay, so I'm going to create the migration and call it um, m0001 underscore initial. Okay, why did I call this? So, first of all, I want uh, migrations to have specific, uh, to be executed in specific order. So, I have to create, whenever I create my migrations, it will be m, the next migration will be m0002 and underscore and whatever uh, is something, for example, that's also okay. But the main thing is that the prefix before the underscore is M0001, 0002, and so on, every next migration. And this gives us possibility to uh, generate a lot of migrations if we need inside the project. Okay. And this M basically is added because inside the migration file, we have to create a class. Okay. So class m0001 this is basically 002 something so i'm going to create this something class and if i just call it without m i cannot create class because the class cannot start with a digit it must start with a letter that's why i call my file m0001 or 2 or whatever is this and just like this, um, I create the class. So I can, of course, reduce the number of zeros and just write 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, and so on. But we have much lower range of writing integrations than when we have 0, 0, 0, 001. Okay. I hope this makes sense. So then what happens? This file basically, so let's just create class inside the initial as well. Class M. 0001 initial and inside each migration class we need to have two methods up and down okay so let me create public function up and i'm going to write here uh, applying migration okay and down 
oops, public function down. And the purpose of the down is to do the reverse thing which you do inside the app. And right here I'm going to write um, down migration. Okay, as simple as this. And for now, I'm just going to delete this something because we're going to only have one migration. But, or let me leave it. So for, for I want to show you something. So I'm going to leave this something. And so I'm going to paste this right here as well. Applying migration, down migration. Okay. Next, I want to create a script which will uh, read the files inside the migrations folder and executes them in the order they are inside the inside the folder okay so for this i'm going to create migrations php file inside the main uh, folder of the project migrations.php and this needs to be executed okay um, and I'm going to execute this using the command line, just PHP migrations.php, just like this. And it will go through the files inside the migrations folder and execute them one by one. Okay, but we need, of course, connection to the database and the place where we save the credentials of the connection to the database. Okay, so let's first create the database class. That should be the core class, core component class, um, which uh, will be a single tone across the whole application, which means that there will be only one instance of the application of the database class. And let's do this. So in the um, let's create an instance of the database inside the application. So right here, um, I'm going to create database DB and down below, I'm going to create this. This DB is new database. And we need to pass some configuration properties to the database. Like if we try to connect to the MySQL database, for example, we need um, the host, we need port, we need the user password, and optionally, we can specify the database name on which we want to connect. OK, so I'm going to open this database class and generate a constructor for this. OK, and inside the constructor, I want to create an instance of the PDO. OK, public uh, PDO, PDO, just like this. And then this PDO equals new PDO. And I'm going to specify right here a couple of arguments. First is DSN domain service name which defines the host and port and database then we need to specify the user and we need to specify the password okay these variables doesn't exist of course yet so we have to create this and then on this pdo i'm gonna call method set attribute pdo attribute actually backslash pdo attribute error mode to be backslash pdo error mode exception okay what does this mean so this means that if there is some problem connecting to the database or any other problem regarding this pdo instance th regarding the database just throw an exception okay without this line basically the pdo doesn't uh, throw an exception it suppresses the error and we won't see anything where when there is something wrong OK, so we have to do this, but we need this DSN user and password to be saved somewhere. Ignore the file, which should not be commented and pushed in the best place, uh, according to the current, the most popular frameworks uh, are the dot end of a file. OK, so we have to create a file. Dot env. OK, and we have to create also a file dot en example and i'm going to explain what are the purpose of this dot en example so this example file is committed and pushed always and it is like a template how the en file should look like db underscore dsn for example is something mysql colon host equals localhost for example port equals 3306 uh, db name equals mvc underscore framework okay db uh, user 
will be for example root db password will be root as well for example so this db um, the dot env example file is just an example file okay and whenever we commit and push our project this example file will be committed and pushed but not the en file so we need to add this en file inside the git ignore okay just like this but we have to copy everything and paste inside the en and adjust for our operating system for our installation so in my case everything is the same localhost uh, the port is same mvc framework root but the password is empty and this is how it should look like and inside the database class i want to read that n file get the information from there and specify the dsn user and password okay for this i'm going to use the package which is called php.env okay if we just open this it belongs to the view lucas uh, vendor and this is very popular package um, over 10,000 github stars if we scroll down here we see the installation instructions we are using composer so we we can just copy this open our uh, terminal paste this and hit the run so it will install but let's scroll down and see how we can actually use this okay so we have to create an instance of this dot env in this way and then call the uh, load method on this okay so you can then load the end uh, in your application with the following thing so i'm going to copy this and actually i want to put this inside the public index php okay we have to do this inside the index php as well as inside the migrations and i'm going to explain why so let's start with the index php right here we are creating an application inside the application we are creating an instance of the database and the database needs this dsn user and password so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to accept right here an array of config object okay which uh, is actually required then i'm going to take out this dsn user and password from this config okay dsn equals from the config let's take out um db dsn or we can even specify this uh, dsn um, user and password one by one okay or we, we can just take out as we want so let's just take out dsn for example to be uh, this or empty string and we need to do the same thing for user user will be whatever is received from the config or an empty string and the same thing for happens for the um, password okay now we have all these variables and we need to pass this config array properly from the application okay from here and i don't have any config right here so the thing is that i need to accept a config right here okay that should be an array as well that should be config object and that config object might contain some configuration properties not only for the database but for the request or a resource or any other things in the future so i want to take out from this config array um, the sub array for the db key okay and pass it down to the database okay now everything is written inside the application in the database but we need to pass this config from the index php right here okay so i'm going to create a config object equals to an array inside the array we need to have db key of course because we are taking out the db key inside the applications constructor right here okay so we take out the db key and right here inside the db we need dsn user and password okay so let's do like this dsn is and let's have a look in the .env package so how we can actually use the values so this is how we can save and this, this is the same thing but how we can access them so we have uh, two ways to access so we can access with the super global env or super global server so i'm going to use super global env so uh, dollar sign underscore env and db underscore dsn okay just like this duplicate this and we have db user and db password and this key is basically db dsn db user db password come from the dot en file okay d 
TB DSN, DB user, TB password. And right here, I'm going to specify user and password. Okay. And I pass this config inside the second argument of the application. Now this looks already good. So we pass this whole object inside the application. Application takes out the sub array of DB key and passes down to the database. Database component takes out DSN user and password and creates an instance of the PDO. So this looks good. However, if we just execute this just like we have written, so the EN file won't contain this DB DSN, DB user and DB password. So we have to load this dot EN file. And for this, we need to use this thing. Okay. So this thing. So copy this. And whenever the, whenever we write the uh, require once after that, we can write here as well. So to load things and I'm going to move this use at the very top actually. Okay. So, and here we have, so we have this dot env and I think, um, undefined namespace dot env. So let's have a look why this is undefined. The package was actually instance installed and it has a lot of dependencies. So, uh, first dependencies were installed and then this package and maybe PHP storm can't understand that this package is actually installed. So let's open the vendor and right click and right here we have reload from disk and here we go. So a lot of folders appear right here and now PHP storm can understand and it can successfully load everything. And when this happens, so we are actually able to use the env, but we need to specify this uh, directory correctly. So this should be the directory where this EN file locates. And at the moment, the dir corresponds to the public. And this is not quite correct. Okay, we need to call dir name on this magic constant dir, which means that take the directory of the current directory, which means the root folder of the project and inside the root folder there exists this env file so this script will load the env variables inside the env and we will be able to access them in this way okay perfect if we run now if we just refresh in the browser or if we just uh, actually we need to refresh in the browser so let's just do this and we don't see any error and this is probably good because we are creating an instance of the database and in the database we're connecting to the PDO. Okay. So if we just don't specify something correctly, let's try this, for example, root two and refresh it. Here we see the error access denied for user root two at localhost using password. No, that's the thing. So we have successfully connected to the database so far, which is very good. Now, we need to write a logic to run the migrations inside the database class. So right here, I'm going to create a method apply migrations. Okay. And this must read the files, as I mentioned, you know, from the migrations folder and apply them to the database. But at some point, we will be in a situation that we have already applied some migrations. And then I created new migration and I want to apply this migration. So we have to keep track which migrations are already applied to the system so that we don't reapply. So if, if we already created the user's table, we just don't need to try to create user's table again. It will give us an error and it doesn't make any sense, right? So we have to create um, an area place where we save which migrations are already applied. And for this, I'm going to create uh, one more method right here, which will be called, let's create right here, which will be called uh, create migrations table. Okay. And what this will do, it will execute the following script PDO uh, exec. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste the SQL statement, which this need, this needs to be executed. And I'm going to explain this. Okay. So, um, at the end, everything is about the executing some SQL. So the migration basically executes some SQL in the database. And right here, I just write create table if not exists migrations. We give it ID. 
we give it migration name and that's going to be the whole name of the file and we specify the time when the migration was applied okay and we need to do this right here uh, as a very first thing inside the apply migrations okay this create migrations table so that if the migrations table doesn't exist it will create this table next thing is to get already applied migrations okay this get applied migrations okay and i have to create method for this as well so i'm going to create a method right here uh, which should actually make a select from the database and just return the values so again we have to call this pdo which is the pdo instance i'm going to call prepare and i'm going to pass right here select migration from migrations okay the migrations is the table name migration is the column name what we have uh, just created we haven't actually created but we have written an sql statement which will create this and whenever the table is created we, we are already able to make a select from the table and that should return a statement statement equals to this and then on the statement i want to call execute okay when the statement ex is executed i can already return some value from the statement statement i'm going to call fetch all um, and i'm going to specify right here pdo um, fetch column okay which actually means that i want to uh, fetch every migration column values as a single dimensional array so if i just don't specify this fetch all this will return an array of each record from the migrations where each array of the uh, migrations record will be sub will have a sub array okay and we don't want this i'm going to show how this works um, actually when we already have some records uh, in the migrations but so far let's leave it just like this and okay so we create the migrations table we um, apply uh, we get all applied migrations and now it's time to actually uh, get all the migrations from the migrations folder okay so i'm gonna call files equals to i'm gonna call scandir okay to take this calendar basically uh, we'll look uh we'll have a look at the directory and gives us a list of all the files inside this directory and i'm going to specify right here the directory name and that should be application root directory slash migrations okay i want to scan this directory and i can already print the files what are inside the directory okay now i want to call s somehow this apply migrations okay in order to test this and i'm gonna now write the thing inside the migrations php because finally i'm gonna execute this with php migrations php okay so let's go to this migrations php and i'm going to copy index php code and put inside the migrations php so why i'm doing this um, i don't want rotor or anything like this just i want the application so the way i execute my script the way i uh, for example load the .en file should be similar just like we are doing um, in the web okay so i'm just uh, requiring this auto load php i want to load this .en but we have to change this dear name because right now the migrations php is in the exact same directory where this en is so we have to remove this dear name okay and this will load the dot en then we create the config we create application i call on application um, run which is also not necessary right now instead i'm gonna call on application db apply migrations okay now let's execute this so here we have first error i didn't expect that we wouldn't have any error and this thing complains about the yeah so the the path basically to the vendor auto load php is not correct because the um the migrations php is in the same folder where we have this vendor we just don't want to go one directory back okay this is okay so let's execute this once more and here we have something interesting we have another error 
and I think we have a lot of errors. So let's have a look. Scandir. Okay. The system cannot find the... Okay, here is one more thing which we need to fix. The dear name which is passed to the application. Okay, that's the dear name of the project root folder. And we should remove this dear name right here. Okay, the project root folder is the current folder where this migration's PHP is. Now we shouldn't see any error. Let's have a look. And here we go. So we see all the files inside the migration's PHP. We see this dot and double dot, which corresponds to the current folder and the parent folder, but we can skip this. But other than that, we have these two files, what we want to execute. Okay. And let's now go to the database PHP. And we have to make a, like a difference, which migrations are already applied. So we have these get applied migrations um, and we have all the migrations. So this will contain all the migrations. Now I'm going to call array diff. Okay. And I'm going to specify right here from the files, let's subtract already applied migrations. And I want to save this in a variable applied migrations. Okay. And let's specify these applied migrations. And finally, that should give us an array to apply uh, migrations. Okay. So at the moment, these two apply migrations will be the same array because we don't have any applied migrations. But whenever these applied migrations return something, for example, um, the first thing will be there, 0001 initial dot PHP, then the difference, the array diff will give us only dot, double dot, and the second file m0002 underscore something, whatever is this. I hope this makes sense, okay? And that's why we're using this array diff. And then I'm going to iterate already um, for two apply migrations. Two apply migrations uh, is uh, migration. And right here, I'm going to write if the migration is dot or if the migration migration is double dot, then I'm going to run continue. Okay. Otherwise, I want to include that migration file. This file require create an instance of this class and call up method on this. Okay. Seems interesting. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to require this migration file and that should be from the application root directory. Let's go inside the migrations dot ph, um, excuse me, migrations and inside the migrations, I'm going to call, I'm going to include the migration. Okay. After this, I want to create an instance of the class. Okay, so the migration basically is the file name. So from the file name, I want to take everything except the extension and that everything m0001 underscore initial will be the class name. So for this, I'm going to call method, which will be path info. Okay. I'm going to specify the migration and I'm going to specify uh, path info uh, file name. Okay. Which finally will give us the name of the file without the extension. And I'm going to print this to show this to you. Okay. Class name open the terminal and execute this. Okay. Right here, I see M0002 something. Okay. So, um, first of all, it's strange. Why do I see only something and why I don't see these two, um, the 0001. So let's see what is the two apply migration. So let's dump the array and have a look. And here we have only 0002 something. Okay, so what are already applied migrations? So yes, here's the thing. So I'm using right now the database. Here's my problem. I'm using the database which actually already exists in my database. So when I, I was testing on this framework, I was working on this, I created the same with the framework and that's why it exists and it can read some things from the database. Okay, so I'm going to open my PHP store, PHP my admin, excuse me, localhost slash PHP my admin. And I'm going to open this MVC framework, 
go to operations and just drop the database okay or let's just drop the tables okay easier here we go okay perfect let's execute this once again sorry for this thing and to apply um excuse me this applied migrations is, is an empty array so applied migrations obviously is an empty array uh, let's remove this and now we should see the um, initial 0001 so if we just execute this the first thing is initial and because we are exiting right here we don't see the second if we just remove the exit right here I see first 0001 initial and then 0002 something perfect now I have to create an instance of this uh, class so instance is new class name Okay, I can put the parenthesis right here or no, or skip the parenthesis both ways, um, both way works. And then on the instance, I'm going to call method um, up. Okay, and before I call this, I'm going to um, write applying migration and I'm going to specify the migration name, which I'm actually trying to apply. And then we're going to have, oops. Um, applied applied migration whatever is this so if I just execute this so here we have a problem okay we need PHP end of line okay let's execute this um, we need this PHP end of line uh, right here as well right here and right here PHP end of line actually so let's do it like this, but I'm going to do something interesting as well. So right here and here, PHP end of line. And now let's execute this. And here we see. So applying migration initial PHP, applying migration that's written from the, that's coming from the uh, migration file itself. Applied migration, applying migration, and then it was actually applied and applied migration. Awesome. And whenever we apply the migrations, we need to save in the database uh, that the migrations are actually applied. Okay, so I'm going to create a new array, new migrations, which th this will be an array which uh, will be applied in the current execution. Okay, and right here inside the new migrations, I'm going to push the migration PHP because that should be applied. And I'm going to write if uh, the migrations, the new migrations basically is not empty. Okay, then I'm going to call this uh, save migrations method, which doesn't exist. And I'm going to pass this new migrations. Otherwise, if the migrations were empty, I'm going to write echo uh, all migrations are applied. Okay, let's do like this. And I'm going to implement this save migrations. Okay, so let's create method. Let's scroll down and create method right here. Public function save migrations. Um, I'm going to take out the migrations right here, which will be array of uh, migrations. And I'm going to... Um, so first of all, I have to write an insert statement. Okay, so this PDO, uh, let's call prepare insert into uh, migrations okay and I only want to make an insert into migration column uh, because the ID and the date will be automatically taken by the MySQL okay and the values basically should be in the f in the following format okay so let me let me show you okay right here so we're going to have inside the parentheses, we're going to have the first file name m0001 uh, underscore initial. Um, let me just write 001 initial PHP, then comma and duplicate this, and that will be underscore two underscore uh, something. Okay, so if we just execute this inside the MySQL. Okay, without the comma, the last comma. If we just execute this inside the MySQL, this should already make two records. And we can even try this, but we don't have probably migration stable, or do we have? So let's just try this. So refresh. And here we have the migration. So let's open the SQL, paste right here. 
hit the go button and two rows inserted we can go to the immigrations table and we see these two rows okay so i'm going to delete these two rows of course and we need to execute something and we have this migrations array which contains just the file names okay nothing else so what i'm going to do right here is call first in method of array underscore map this is something tricky but very cool so i'm going to use php 7.4 um, arrow functions okay fn m and i'm going to return the following thing okay inside the double quotations i'm going to write the parentheses uh, single quotation and then the migration single qu quotation in parentheses okay and the second argument of the array map of course is the migrations file which we need to map and this finally should give us something okay so new migrations so let's call it migrations as well and we can actually have a look at the migrations before and without exit and migrations after okay so let's execute this and so it doesn't look good so what's the thing right here uh okay so let's have a look in the in the output so this is migrations before and right here we have array to string conversion in the database php line 83 right here array to my mistake right here we just need m okay so my mistake so let's execute this and here we keep we see so right here we have this um with with the normal file and right here we have inside the parentheses and with the quotations okay now what i just want to do is simply concatenate with these values with the comma okay just like i have written here so maybe i can remove this all vardam statements and i can directly write an implode with uh with comma and right here we need the closing parentheses and that finally will be the string which we need to pass right here okay okay cool and finally we need to call statement uh, the prop here basically returns a statement statement and on the statement i want to call execute and this should make records in the database and let's try to execute this okay so i'm going to run php migrations something happened let's run this again all migrations are applied okay and if we just open the mysql database right here we see that two records we are made there awesome so let me delete this and do one more improvement okay um because we are we have written this echo statement multiple times i want to change this and write in a better way so i'm going to create right here maybe protected function log which will accept a message and it will do the following so it will output um, the current date for example date formatted in year month day hour a minute minute and second okay and dash in the current message and php end of line so now instead of writing an echo i'm gonna replace it with this uh, log okay right here for example this log okay awesome uh it doesn't need this echo at all so and replace it right here as well this log okay and without echo obviously and let's see now the output whenever we execute this so here we have so this is applying migration applied migration applying migration applied migration awesome so we have actually implemented the migrations system so now we can create and actually write some valid sql statements inside this initial php and something php which will create um, some tables in the database okay so let's open now this initial php and inside the initial php i'm going to write 
the um, create users table script. Actually, I want to copy and paste this script. But before I copy and paste this script, how should I execute? So I need to access the database, okay? And I can access database by application app db, okay? This is the database, and I can save in a variable db equals this. Then on the db, uh, I can on dbpdo I can call exec. And I'm going to just specify right here the SQL statement, okay, SQL. And I just want to create that SQL statement right here, which will be uh, create users table something something. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, my SQL script, uh, and quickly explain this. So create table users ID is integer auto increment primary key, email is virtual not null, first name virtual not null, last name virtual not null, we have status, we have created at, which is the current timestamp, and that's it, okay? Uh, most of the modern uh, and popular PHP frameworks have uh, also the methods to um, which, which helps us basically to create, uh, to generate such kind of scripts, okay? So we generally don't write such kind of SQL statement in the modern frameworks, such as Laravel, for example, or Symfony or E2, but we have different ways right there to generate the migrations. But this will make our video much, much longer if we start implementing every single detail what the framework um, has uh, because they are working on the frameworks for months and years. Okay, so, um, but you get the idea how we're going to do this. So inside the SQL, um, we create table in, inside the app method. So inside the down method, we can drop the table. Uh, we just write drop table users and that's it. We just execute like this. And inside something, we don't need anything at the moment. So I'm going to delete this. Um, okay, so let's execute this actually and create the user's table. So clear, execute this. Okay, all migrations are applied. Okay, let's refresh the database, drop both of the migrations. Here we go and execute this once again. Applying migration, applied migration, initial PHP, refresh the database, and we see the user's table. Okay, and I, uh, like, in purpose, did not include the password in the user, so I'm going to create now new migration, so to simulate the real working flow, that should be M0002, add password to... Um, I don't know, add password column, for example, to user. So we can make the name longer, add password column to user table, or we can just write add password column. This is just up to us. So, and right here, we need the class M0002, add password column. We need two methods up and down. And I'm going to copy and paste this up and down. It's not very complex. So here we have it. Okay. We get the database and we just execute something. Okay. Uh, alter table users, add column password, alter table users. Inside the down, we need, of course, drop column password, uh, just like this. Okay, perfect. Let's open the terminal, execute the script again. And now it tried to apply the migration, second migration. If we just refresh the table, we see password right here. Okay, very good. Now, we have successfully created the table and implemented the migration system. It's time to actually make a user registration. Okay. And that should be done from the auth controller from here. Uh, whenever the validate happens inside the register, we need to create new user in the database. And now it's time to work on the database models. That's it for the third part. If my video teaches you something, just hit the like button and share this video. In the next part, we're going to implement the actual user registration. We're going to come up to simple active record objects, active record models, and we're going to also create session component and implement session flash messages.